don't have to go back to basics if you stay in basics. The Steps Made Simple by Dan James This entire video today is dedicated to Step 1 and the spiritual principle behind Step 1, which brings us to page 30, chapter 3, more about alcoholism. In the future, I'm going to make a video on each and every other step, including the doctor's opinion. Hope to explain and make clear some important pointers. The spiritual principle behind step one is honesty. Step one starts on page 30 and ends on page 43. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, Hit the notification bell for future videos. We learned that we had to fully concede to our innermost selves that we were alcoholics. This is the first step in recovery. And we're on page 30 here, the chapter more about alcoholism, the beginning of step one. This is the first step in recovery. My name is Dan, I'm an alcoholic and my sobriety date is October 7th of 1994. And I've been in Alcoholics Anonymous ever since that day. Not only did I accept my problem, but I also accepted the solution, which we're gonna get into here shortly. We're gonna talk about the spiritual principles of Alcoholics Anonymous. We're gonna talk about where each step is in the big book, what pages they are in exactly, so that you can categorize it in your mind and visualize it, it won't be confusing. I'm gonna to try to make it simple. We're gonna go back to basics. If you stay in basics, you won't have to go back to basics. So I'm gonna jump right into it. The idea that somehow, someday, he will control and enjoy his drinking is a great obsession of every abnormal drinker. The persistence of this illusion is astonishing. Many pursue it to the gates of insanity or death. Okay, that's an illusion. We're lying to ourselves. That's why it's honesty. The lie I tell myself is that someday, somehow, I'll control and enjoy my drinking. Glass in hand, I'm going to enjoy an evening by the fireplace. But the truth is, I end up passed out on Skid Row on the sidewalk. The insanity was, is that I could have one drink. Okay, enough joking around. Let's get back to the lesson. I really want to emphasize this highlighted portion in regards to how we're dishonest with ourselves. We have tried every imaginable remedy. In some instances, there has been brief recovery, followed always by a still worse relapse. If you look at page 31, I'd have your book out and highlight these things. Despite all we can say, many who are real alcoholics are not going to believe they are in that class. By every form of self-deception and experimentation, they will try to pr prove themselves exception to the rule, or I'm going to lie to myself. The opposite of what honesty is. This is just one of my favorite statements in the book. We do not like to pronounce any individual as an alcoholic. I make that statement in meetings all the time. Everybody has to discover that and admit that to their animal selves. On page 33, we have seen the truth demonstrated again and again. Once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. That's opposite the lie I tell myself. That someday, somehow, I will control and enjoy my drinking. The truth is, once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. Once you make a cucumber into a pickle, it will never go back to a cucumber again. To be gravely affected, one does not necessarily have to drink long time nor take the quantities some of us have. That's an important note. Some people be can become alcoholics right away. That's on page 33. The middle of page 44. 34, I'm sorry. For those who are unable to drink moderately, the question is how to stop altogether. That's an important question. Whether such a person can quit upon a non-spiritual basis depends upon the extent to which he has already lost the power to choose whether he will drink or not. 
Many of us felt that we had plenty of character. There was a tremendous urge to cease forever, yet we found it impossible. This is the baffling feature of alcoholism as we know it. The utter inability to leave it alone, no matter how the great the necessity or wish. Okay, I left this part out on purpose. If you look back, this is an important note. For those who are unable to drink moderately, the question is how to stop altogether. And this is a big question. We are assuming, of course, that the reader desires to stop. That's a huge question. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking without that none of this will be possible. Here's where you're going to be able to explain to some of the new men about what the definition of insanity is. So we shall describe some of the mental states that precede a relapse into drinking for obviously this is the crux of the problem. That's a huge note. The thought preceding the first drink is the definition of insanity. Later on when we get to step two will describe the definition of restoration to sanity. But right now, I need to understand what the big book suggestion of insanity is so I know what I'm being restored to in step two. Don't forget to donate to the seventh tradition. There's a link in the description portion below. Thank you and God bless. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, Hit the notification bell for future videos. This is on the top of page 35 where they're going to begin to describe some of these states. And of course, I'm not going to read all this with you. You'll have to read some of it on its own. It would take too long for us to go over everything. I apologize for that. They started describing Jim. Here's some insanity. He had much knowledge about himself as an alcoholic, yet all reason for not drinking were easily pushed aside in, the, in favor of the foolish idea that he could take whiskey if only he mixed it with milk. Whatever the precious definition of the word may be, we call this plain insanity. How can such a lack of proportion of the ability to think straight be called anything else. There's a definition of insanity for you to explain to your new man when you get to step two what they're being restored out of. We're still on page 37 here, but there was always the curious mental phenomenon that parallel with our sound reasoning. There inevitably ran some insanely trivial excuse for taking the first drink. This is the insanity, the idea before the first drink. This is a very important point. With hardly an exception, will be absolutely unable to stop drinking on the basis of self-knowledge. This is a point we wish to emphasize and re-emphasize to smash home upon our alcoholic readers as it has been revealed to us out of bitter experience. On page 39, I saw that willpower and self-knowledge would not help in these strange mental blank spots. Page 42, I had never been able to understand people who said that a problem had them hopelessly defeated. This is important. You're going to meet a lot of people that have been able to take care of their self, balance their checkbook, raise a family, pay a mortgage, but then not understand that alcohol has them defeated. Okay, I want to take a minute to talk about this on page 42, right here in almost the last paragraph. They outline the spiritual answer and the program of action which a hundred of them had followed successfully. Though I had been only a nominal churchman, their proposals were not intellectually hard to swallow. But the program of action, though entirely sensible, was pretty drastic. It meant I would have to throw several lifelong conceptions out of the window. That was not easy. But... The moment I made up my mind to go through with the process, 
I had the curious feeling that my alcoholic condition was relieved, and in fact, it proved to be. This is what I think is one of the most important things to understand about step one. So the process is they outlined the spiritual answer and program of action which a hundred of them had followed successfully. The first hundred men and women. So what I understand about step one, if you look at this, step one describes the problem but the big book never gives you a problem without giving you the solution afterwards. So this is an important note and hopefully this will allow you to look at step one from a different perspective. What it's really saying, we, we admit we are alcoholics all the time. You hear that in a meeting, people raising their hand and saying, my name is so-and-so and I'm an alcoholic. The suggestion of the big book, what it's suggesting is that this individual's alcoholic problem was relieved as soon as he was willing to to accept the solution not just the problem and that has been my experience I could accept that I was an alcoholic and all the incomprehensible demoralization that went along with that but what I couldn't accept was the solution if you like this video don't forget to subscribe like Hit the notification bell for future videos. Don't forget to donate to the 7th Tradition. There's a link in the description portion below. Thank you and God bless. We'll be going over in some of the next videos the, the spiritual principle behind step 2. You'll find when we get to step 4, there'll be some really important information that we'll go over. Thank you and God bless. Don't forget to subscribe, like, Hit the notification bell for future videos. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can.